Hello, I'm Elias Saba from AFTVNews.com, and this video will show you how to root a second generation Fire TV. This guide uses the new method developed by Rbox, which is much safer, much easier to follow with less risk. There is a written guide that goes along with this video at AFTVNews.com slash FireTV2Root. There you'll find step-by-step -step instructions just like in this video, and you'll also find all the links to the files that you need to download to root the Fire TV. This routing guide works for all software versions for the Fire TV 2. Right now, the latest software version is 5.0.5. .5. There's a good chance a future software update for the Fire TV 2 will block routing, so I'll be sure to keep the written guide updated and add a note when it is no longer compatible with a specific software version. There are a few things you're gonna need to complete this guide. First off, you're gonna need a USB keyboard. Second, you're gonna need either a USB drive or a micro SD card that's at least one gigabyte in size. The drive or the card must be formatted with FAT32. If you use a USB drive instead of a micro SD card, I highly suggest you have a USB hub so that you can connect both the keyboard and the USB drive to the Fire TV at the same time. There is a way to follow this guide using a USB drive without a USB hub, but I won't be covering that in this video. You can check the written guide for how to do that. If you're using a micro SD card, you won't need a USB hub. The last thing you'll need is an A to A USB cable. This allows you to connect the Fire TV to your PC. There's currently no way to root the Fire TV 2 without this cable. The first thing you need to do is download three separate zip files. Again, you can find the links to the files you need to download at my written guide at aftvnews.com slash firetv2root. When downloading these files, be sure you're downloading the latest version of each file and be sure you're not downloading the source code. These are the three files you need in my downloads folder. Again, by the time you're watching this, these files may have been updated, so be sure to get the latest version. Next, unzip the first two files you downloaded. Once you've unzipped the first two files, put all of their contents in the same folder. Connect your USB drive or micro SD card to your computer and transfer the file ramdisk-recovery.cpio to it. Next, copy the largest zip file, the one that starts with Sloan, over to your micro SD card or USB drive. The two files you just copied over to your USB drive or micro SD card should be at the root topmost directory. If you haven't done so before, you need to install ADB and Fastboot on your computer. You can find guides on how to do that at aftvnews.com slash ADB. Next, you need to install the MTK65 preloader drivers. So click the link in the written guide, scroll down the page, and download the drivers. Next, extract the drivers using a program like WinRAR. To install the drivers, open your device manager. Right click the topmost icon and select add legacy hardware. Click next, then select install the hardware that I manually select from a list. Then click next. Then click next again and click the have disk button. Click the browse button and find the folder that you just extracted. Select the folder that corresponds to the version of Windows that you have. Then select either the 64 or the 32-bit file. If you're running Windows 8 or Windows 10, select the Windows 7 folder. Click open after you select the right file and then click OK. Now click next a couple times and click install this driver software anyway on the pop-up window that appears. When it's done, click finish and close your device manager. Next, you need to make sure your Fire TV has ADB debugging and USB debugging enabled. To do that, turn on your Fire TV, head down to Settings, head over to System, down to Developer Options, and enable both ADB debugging and USB debugging. Now, power off the Fire TV, connect the A to A USB cable to the Fire TV and to your computer, and then power on the Fire TV. Wait for Windows to detect the device and set up drivers. It's completely normal and expected for Windows to report that some of the drivers were not installed successfully. Don't worry about it and continue with the guide. Once Windows is done, disconnect the A to A cable and power off the Fire TV. Now head back to the routing files you downloaded at the very beginning 
and open the install underscore fire tv2 underscore recovery dot bat file. A command window should open that says waiting for preloader. Now connect the A to A cable from your PC to the Fire TV and then power on the Fire TV. The command window should automatically detect the Fire TV and start reading and writing files. This process will take about five minutes. Just be sure the computer doesn't go to sleep while it's doing this. You should probably pause the video now and come back when the process is done. When it's done, unplug both the A to A USB cable and the power from your Fire TV. If you're using a micro SD card, Insert it into the back of the Fire TV and plug in your USB keyboard. If you're using a USB drive, connect it and a USB keyboard to a USB hub and connect the hub to the Fire TV. Now with the USB keyboard and either your micro SD card or the USB drive connected to the Fire TV, power on the Fire TV. Now while it's booting, you should see the Team Win logo followed by the boot menu. When you see the boot menu, press the right arrow on the keyboard to launch recovery. Once you're in recovery, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move the cursor and use the enter key to select buttons. If you have a mouse or a touchpad also connected to the Fire TV, you can use that as well. Now click the install button, then click the select storage button. Now pick either micro SD card or USB depending on which one you're using. Then click the OK button and select the Sloan ROM. Next, click the button with the three arrows where it says swipe to confirm flash. You don't actually have to swipe the button, you can just click it. Now just wait for recovery to install the ROM. When it's done installing, select the reboot system button and wait for your Fire TV to reboot all the way to the home screen. Your Fire TV should now be rooted. To verify this, open a command prompt and connect to the device via ADB. Again, if you don't know how to do this, Go to aftvnews.com slash adb for instructions. Once you're connected, run the command adb space shell. Next, type su and hit enter, and you'll see a pop-up appear on your Fire TV. You're going to have to select grant on the pop-up. The pop-up will only appear for a few seconds, so if you miss it, just type su again and hit enter. If it says root at Sloan, then you know you rooted successfully. You should now block software updates on the Fire TV by entering the command you see on the screen. And that's it, you're all done. The last thing you'll probably want to do is disable USB debugging. That way you can use USB drives and USB peripherals with the Fire TV again. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also be sure to check AFTVNews.com. I'll be putting up a bunch of new guides on what to do with a rooted Fire TV, like how to install the Google Play Store.